This is a fairly typical standard parametric calculus problem. We're given the velocity as a function of time, both the x and y components, and we're given a particular position at t equals 1. The questions that we're answering have to do with a particular component and the fundamental theorem. Uh, an understanding of the parametric version of dy dx, the parametric definition of speed, and the parametric definition of total distance traveled. So let's just jump in. In part A, they want to know the x-coordinate of the position of the particle at t equals 2. So a key understanding in parametrics is that the x and y components can be treated independently. And so the x component at t equals 2 simply is the x component at some known position in time x1, which is given as 3, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of dx dt with respect to time. And I've put the relevant formulas into the calculator ahead of time. Here's the x component, y1. Later we'll be using some of these other calculations. y2 is obviously the y component. But we're just dealing with the x component. And so uh, we simply say it's 3 plus the integral from 1 to 2. of the x component of velocity with respect to time, but again time is represented with x. We have 2.5569. And again, I simply encourage my students to always write out four digits after the decimal place so they don't have to bother with debating whether they should round or not. In part B, we're told that between t equals 0 and 1, there is a point along the curve where the slope equals 2. So let's just uh, write this out. Parametrically, the slope dy dx can be expressed as dy dt over dx dt. That's the basic formula there in blue. And so we just need to find the time where that expression equals 2. Um, let's just write that out. Slope or dy dx is in parametric form Uh, dy dt dx dt we solve numerically for the time when dy dt dx dt equals 2. That's what we're trying to do here. So look again what we've got here in the uh, in for equations. y2 is the y component. So y3 is the y component over the x component of velocity. That is our measure of slope. And what I have down in y5, which is the only one I'm graphing, is y3 minus 2. That's equivalent, uh, looking for the 0 for y3 minus 2 is equivalent to solving when does y3 equal 2. So that's what we're going to calculate. Our window is 0 to, let's make it 0 to 1, because they've told us that we can find it in that integral, in that interval. And so we'll just calculate the 0, somewhere between 0 and 1. Wait for the graph to appear.
There's a graph coming up. It crosses right there. So we just need to identify that point. Left bound, 0.5, why not? Uh, right bound, how about 1? And we'll make our guess 1, 2, because it's the job of the calculator to find that point, not our job to suggest a 0 for it. So we get t equals 0 0.8401. This gives 0 0.8401. Part C asks a similar question. It says, um, when does the speed of the particle equal 3? Remember, over here illustrated in blue, the definition of speed is the absolute value of the velocity. And in parametric uh, problems that takes the form of that square root of the sum of the squares of the components of velocity. So we're really just setting that equal to 3 or in other words if you look what we've put into the calculator when does that value represented in y4 minus 3 equals 0. So let's go down to y6 Uh, we actually want to turn off the graph of y5 and turn on the graph of y6. Uh, we probably need a larger window, so why don't we try, not knowing any better, let's try 0 to 5. Hope it works. Hope it, it gives us an, a crossover. And so we'll try the finding the 0 of that graph. It's going to take a while for that. There's the graph. Okay, so we can see that the transition point is somewhere around between 2 and 3, certainly. So let's give uh, our left guess, let's make our left bound 2 and our right bound, I don't know, 2.5 and our guess is the same as our right bound and there we go 2.1958 t is approximately equal to 2.1958 um, given by setting the square root of uh, dx dt squared plus dy dt squared equal to 3. Part D. We're looking for the total distance traveled. Well, the total distance traveled is in fact just the integral over the time interval of the absolute value of the velocity and so we're going to use that same expression for velocity that we just used in part C but now we're just going to integrate between 0 and 1. So again let's go back and look at those equations y4 is where we've stored the speed and so we're going to do that integral from 0 to 1 4 and the variable that we're integrating with respect to is t but we've represented it by x and we get 1.5946 so let's just write that out total distance traveled is the integral 0 to 1 dx dt squared plus dy dt squared and that's approximately equal to, now I've forgotten the number, 1.5946 
Quite a bit of calculating, but no real surprises conceptually. We simply need to know these expressions that we have over on the right to work in parametric form. 